Hello everyone, this is Ragini N3. We are going to discuss upon the question and answers on the topic strategies for enhancements in food production. So the incurious thing about this chapter is so there is an increase in food population and it increased the demand for food. So this chapter tells us about the strategies to increase food production biologically. So the methods used for increase in food production are tissue culture and embryo transfer which are discussed in this chapter. And the mark weightage is for NEET examination you have 2 to 3 questions asked each year. For board examinations you have total of 3 questions, 1 each in MCQ. 2 mark and then 3 mark respectively. So total of 6 marks are asked in the board examinations each year. So coming to the first question, what do you mean by breed and explain the types of breeding? So what is the definition of breed? So breed is a group of animals and they are related by descent. Related by descent is they are closely related and similar in most of the characters like general appearance, features, size and configuration etc. And they are said to belong to a breed. So types of breeding. So the two types of breeding are inbreeding and outbreeding. Inbreeding are mating of closely related animals. Inbreeding is breeding among breed itself. Okay, that is within the breed. Outbreeding is cross between unrelated animals. That is, we saw earlier, right? They are related by descent. So, if they are not related by descent and you breed them, they are called as outbreeding. So, outbreeding of two types it is called outcrossing and cross breeding. So, outcrossing means same breed but no common ancestor that is they are not related with within a few generations they are, they might be related with uh, like six to eight generations before okay this is outcrossing cross breeding in which superior male is bred with superior female and they are crossed so this is cross breeding okay for this question, you have to write definition and then types. So types, there are four, two types and inside doubt breeding, there are subdivisions. So outcrossing and cross breeding. You have to write all these. Okay, the next question. Consider your friend decides to start a bee farm. Okay, what you will say to him or her for a successful establishment? So the answer is, what all you should consider while keeping a bee farm? That is the simplified form of the question. So you have to know the knowledge of the nature and habits of bees. So habits of bees means um, it's like uh, uh, when they are like uh, going for uh, nectar collection and uh, which flowers they collect nectar etc and selection of suitable location for keeping the beehives. So you have to know uh, what type of location you have to have and what type of surroundings or like uh, the types of flowers around them so that they could uh, have a, a good quality of honey. Okay. The third point is catching and hiving of swarms. So you will have to be able to catch and hive the form swarms. Swarms means group of bees. Okay. So you have to be able to catch it and hiving it. So bees usually build nest when the queen of the bee is present. So you have to know that point. And management of bee hives during different seasons. So honey bees collect different uh, types of honey, sorry, different collect nectar from different types of flowers in different seasons. So you have to know that and you have to know how to collect the honey from the collected from the beehive or you have to know how to collect beeswax. Okay. And 
Bees shed a well pollinate sunflower, brassica, apple, and pear. So you have to answer with these five questions. So what you will tell your friend so that his uh, uh, bee farm is a success. So next question is, what are the process that has to be followed to improve the quality of milk? The answer is, you have to choose a good breed. Good breed means high yield potential. Certain types of cattle will have low milk quantity, milk yield. Certain types of cows will have high milk yield. So you have to choose according to it. And the cattle should be disease free and or should be kept disease free. For that you have to house well them and provide adequate water. Okay. And food quantity and quality should be followed according to science. And cleanliness and hygiene. So you have to follow cleanliness so that there are disease free cattle. And last point is after collection of milk, you have to know how to store it, which temperature you have to store it and how many days you can store it. So these are all the uh, parameters so that you could get a high quality of milk. The next question, why tissue culture is done and explain various ways a plant is produced by tissue culturing. Okay. So, what is tissue culturing? Why is tissue culture done? So, you have this traditional breeding. That is, you uh, take a stem or a seed, you sow it and then it uh, comes into a plant or a tree. Okay? So, what's the drawback of this is it failed to keep pace with the growing requirements. You know, our population is growing up and the food uh, requirement is also growing up. So, traditional breeding, you will have a, it takes years for a tree to grow, even months for a, a small plant to grow. For so, for efficient and fast crop development, tissue culture was developed. So, why was tissue plant tissue culture developed? For efficient and fast crop development. Okay. So, before going into the types of tissue culture methods, we have to know the term totipotency. What does totipotency mean? The ability of a cell or a part of a tissue to grow into an adult form. So you have a cell over here and it grows into an entire plant. Okay. So this is called totipotency. Okay. So the types of uh, uh, tissue culture development are micropropagation and somatic hybridization. So what you do in micropropagation is based on the principle of totipotency. That is, you take a tissue, so you take a leaf or a, a part of leaf or a stem. Usually, leaf is only taken. So, you take a part of leaf and then you culture it in the lab and make it grow into a whole plant, okay, with stem and roots, okay. So you make it grow into a plant, small plant, which is done usually in test tubes. And this is called as micropropagation. And what is somatic hybridization? So somatic hybridization involves isolation of protoplast. What is protoplast? Protoplast are cells without cell wall. So you are aware that plant cells have cell wall. So this cell wall is removed by treatment of enzymes. So cell walls gives integrity to plant cell. So when the cell wall is removed, you get protoplast. So it loses its shape and uh, appears like this, somewhat like this. So round in shape. So this is a protoplast. So you remove the cell wall. So you isolate protoplast from two different varieties of plants. Like plant A, plant B, you 
take it okay for example each having a desirable character so if plant a is resistant to disease and plant b can grow in drought conditions you can fuse these two this can be fused to get a hybrid protoplast so why we are taking protoplast uh, you can't combine cells with a cell wall because it's hard to penetrate so cell walls is very hard okay so you remove the cell wall you take the protoplast and allow them to fuse so you make get a plant cell with two desirable characteristics okay so this cell can be further grown to form a new plant how it can be grown through the um, principle of totipotency so a single cell can grow into a whole plant so you make this single cell to grow into a whole plant okay that's how you get this um, plant tissue culturing so what is like a disadvantage of somatic hybridization is you won't usually get the desirable characters always so certain times uh, different characters get combined so if you want like drought resistant and pest resistant together you might get pest resistance but drought resistance might be eliminated or you get some other characteristics of the plant b that we join together fuse together so that's a major disadvantage of somatic hybridization The next question is artificial insemination. So you have to explain artificial insemination. So this is called as controlled breeding experiment. So artificial uh, insemination is controlled breeding experiment where you inject semen from the chosen male into the chosen female. So you choose male and the female and you collect cell and semen from the male and inject it into the uh, chosen female. This is what artificial insemination. You will get the desired breed after fertilization. Okay. Next is explain biofortification. What is biofortification? So biofortification is breeding crops that possess high amount of vitamins, minerals, proteins and healthier fats. So you have to like uh, breed them, like um, make these crops um, rich in vitamins and minerals. So you can do it artificially or it's even naturally occurring uh, certain crops have high amounts of vitamins and minerals and crossing them with the desired crosses or desired plant species you get plants that have high number of vitamins, minerals, proteins and healthier fats. Okay, so that is biofortification. So changing a crop which suits our needs. Uh, in terms of nutrition is called biofortification. So what are all the plants that are produced rich in certain nutrients are protein content and quality is changed, oil content and quality can be changed and vitamin content can be changed and micronutrient and mineral content can be changed in the plants to suit our needs. So this is biofortification. I have to write the definition of biofortification and the uh, the nutrients that are involved in biofortification. Another question is provide an insight on green revolution and list the hybrid crops that were produced during that period of time. So for this question, you have to answer what is green revolution. So during or after independence of India, the major problem was to produce food for the increasing population. So what was done is introduction of high yielding wheat and rice. So was introduced. It was after 1960s, which increased the food production. Okay, this is known as the Green Revolution. The plant produced during green revolution of wheat and rice, sugar cane and millets. And wheat and rice are uh, usually like uh, high yielding uh, varieties are produced 
sugar cane two types of sugar cane so from one from uh, north indian variety and one from the south indian variety was crossed to produce a uh, tall thick stem sugar cane okay and millets were also produced during a green revolution okay the next question what is the method of plant breeding for disease resistance so how do you produce disease resistant plants so the method is called mutation breeding so what do you call by disease resistance plants plants that are resistant to pest disease diseases caused by virus bacteria etc so how do you make plants resistant to it by mutation breeding so how you do it so genetic variations are created in the base sequence of gene so you have gene gene is com dna is composed of gene so you have bases right so you change the basis of the gene and artificial induced mutation is done so that is you add a chemical or by radiation such as uv radiation ir radiations you in you provide it to the uh, cells okay when you provide they are they are occur a mutation so random mutation you don't know where the mutation is created and then you screen the plants that you produce that are caused with mutation and you choose the desired characteristic okay you have you will find a plant that might grow in broad so you might find a plant that is resistant to um, some bacteria you might find a plant that is resistant to some virus so you have to check every plant that you induced mutation in it okay you take a plant or a seed and induce it mutations and then screen it so that is you have to plant those seeds you have to take many seeds you have to plant those in artificial medium or in soil and you will might get a plant with a desired characteristic you have to take the plant select you have to select those plants and then um, breed it again and again so that you will get a um, plant with your desired character so this is called mutation breeding so that's how you create a disease resistant plants so the next question is what is germplasm collection so germplasm collection includes the entire collection or having all the diverse alleles for all genes in a given crop so you have a crop so for example you take a mango so you have different varieties of mango available throughout india okay so that every mango tree has different alleles so this every seed of the each mango tree is preserved and saved and this is called germplasm collection not only for mango for every types of plant present in this world they have wild type so they have wild type that is a uh, normal characteristic that is that the uh, characteristics are like not changed okay so the wild type of the plant is preserved it is called as germplasm collection so we have plant species that have undergone genetic variability so because of this we have exploited them to our needs okay so to avoid the loss of the wild type of the plant variety germs plasms are created so we have hybrids hybrids we have uh, flower hybrids we have hybrids of uh, fruit producing trees and we have created so much of hybrids that we have lost the wild uh, fruit producing trees so you can produce coconuts when they are uh, a, a small height itself so that uh, to preserve the wild type of coconut tree we create this germplasm okay this is the last question and coming to the summary 
So after completion of the syllabus, you will be able to know concepts regarding animal husbandry and plant breeding. Animal husbandry involves how poultry farming and milk production and fisheries etc. Plant breeding, you will uh, you had studied about uh, germplasms and then uh, micropropagations etc. And you will come about uh, certain terms such as hybrids and single cell proteins. So these are like uh, microorganisms that are nutrients. So they grow it and uh, produce it in a capsule form so that uh, people who are uh, not able to like intake proper nutrients in their diet, they can take this SCP. So this is SCP and after completing this chapter, we will know about these terms. Okay, students will be able to understand the importance of usage of biological techniques in farming. Okay, so how important is biological techniques in farming that you will understand after the completion of this chapter. So next, this is about our institution and then thank you. Have a great day.